Hello and welcome to the episode 178 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today we'll talk a bit about the composition of She Loves You, about another day of madness in New Zealand, and about the completion of the basic track for Everybody's Got Something to Hide Except Me and My Monkey. What a mouthful! Let's start with the 27th of June 1961. Pete Best, George Harrison, John Lennon and Paul McCartney were again on the stage of the Top 10 Club in Hamburg, West Germany, for another evening performance for their second residency in town. The same lineup of the Beatles was engaged in 1962 in a lunchtime and an evening performance at the Cavern Club in Liverpool. In 1963, instead, the Beatles had a day of rest from gigging, but work still loomed on John Lennon and Paul McCartney, who managed to finish the writing of She Loves You in the dining room of the McCartney's family home in Liverpool, after starting the task the day earlier before a gig in Newcastle-upon-Tyne. One year later, we get more madness during the New Zealand leg of the Beatles' 1964 tour. The Fabs found 5,000 fans to greet them at the Christchurch airport, where they landed from Dunedin. Then, the usual hordes of fans were stationed along the road that brought the band to their hotel in town, with a 13-year-old girl throwing herself in front of the car. The girl got hit and bounced off the road, but she managed to get what she wanted – attention. The Beatles took her at their hotel to make sure she was unhurt. In the hotel, some guys hid in the room's closets, wanting to cut a lock of Beatles' hair to give them to their girlfriends. They were discovered and ran away before the arrival of the band. In all this mess, the two 11-song performances that the Beatles gave at the Majestic Theatre in the evening were a minor footprint in the history of the band. In 1965, the Beatles were engaged in the first of two days in Rome. The second day had been added to the schedule of the tour, but the attendance to today's two concerts at 4.30 and 9.30 pm was anything but stellar, with the Teatro Adriano only half full. Some blamed the hot weather, commenting that whoever had managed to convince anyone to get into a theatre without air conditioning in those conditions had performed nothing short of a miracle, but the truth is that the attendance was not up to par to what the Beatles had come to expect during their live shows. A local newspaper, Il Messaggero, gave the band somewhat backhanded praises in its review of the shows, while another newspaper, Il Tempo, reported that the real show was by the fans, echoed what the Kiwis must have felt one year before. Moving on to 1966, the Beatles flew back to London from Hamburg, West Germany, but remained in England only for a few hours before catching a plane for Tokyo, Japan, for the next leg of their war tour. Unfortunately, a typhoon warning forced the plane to take a nine-hour unscheduled stop in Anchorage, Alaska. The Beatles tried to book an entire floor at the local hotel and to sneak in unobserved, but in 30 minutes from their arrival, a local radio got wind of their presence in town and parked outside the hotel to give regular reports about what was happening to the band because God knows what could have been happening, while they were in town. Local fans rejoiced. And I will rejoice when you will head to www.simonmas.com support and give at least a look at the many things you can do to help me out to create further music-related material. Which material? You might be instrumental in guiding my choices with donations, comments, shares, and announcements on air from your local radio stations. Thank you for any help you might want to give. One more entry for the 1968 recording session at the EMI Studios with the Beatles recording a remake of Everybody's Got Something to Hide Except Me and My Monkey. 
Between 5 p.m. and 3.45 a.m., the band recorded six takes of the rhythm track, with the sixth deemed best. Two reduction mixdowns of the songs were attempted, creating take 7 and take 8, with the tape machine running slower, so that the takes sounded faster and in an higher key when played back normally. This concluded the session. And this concludes today's episode of the podcast too. Tomorrow we'll check another trick in the sleeve of Brian Epstein in the early days of his management of the Beatles. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.